and welcome to this video. Now today we're going to be talking about L2TP VPN servers. Now this is uh, slightly legacy nowadays. Um, we have lots of clients no longer able to, to use this particular um, protocol such as Android devices, Windows clients making it increasingly harder to use um, particularly when your server is using NAT. Um, there are ways around it but you know it's it's not as straightforward as it used to be uh, well, i've used this for many years been a big fan of it for uh, connecting micro to micro -tick, as well as other client devices to vpn server so i think it's still worth mentioning it's still worth looking into um and it's still a viable option i think for the example i'm going to show you now so just a brief overview um so this time we're going to be using udp uh, 1701 um however that is unencrypted so what we do is then we use IPsec over the top, which will give us a layer of encryption. So now, if we take a look, do some scribbling, I'll give you a quick uh, view as to what it is we're gonna set up today. So basically what we're gonna do is we have, um, as I mentioned before, this is going to be for uh, our MicroTik to MicroTik. So I use this quite a bit in various uh, scenarios. We have, we have a cloud, which we're going to call the internet. Okay. And then we have our, our Microsoft uh, L2 TP VPN server. I can spell, there we go. Now, um, if you've seen any of my other VPN uh, videos, we're going to be using the same scenario as before. This is in an AWS uh, EC2 instance. So we've got CHR running in AWS. Um, but this could be any um, you know, locally hosted. It could be your home router. It could be uh, your own private cloud. It doesn't really matter. We have a private IP, a public, sorry, public IP here. Um, however, this is then natted between here and our instance um, just because the way it's currently set up there are ways around that within AWS but again we're not going to go in that here but this would simulate if you had at home um, your ISP was giving you a you connected via a modem or it was a um, some other service where between here and here it was using a, a local subnet and then you were having to port forward those as I mentioned UDP 1701 um, so our aim is what we want to do is we're going to have this router sitting over here now he's connecting to the internet in our scenario we've got a another router in the middle here which is actually my dev router but this could be a, a 4g this could be a starlink or any other isp using for example CG NAT, whereby we don't have a public interface sitting on here. This is a local one. We're having to, if we were to do an IP set between here, here, sorry, here and here, we would need to use, we'd need to port forward here, but we're assuming we don't have access to do that on here. But what we do have is all outbound allowed. So it's not like it's sitting in a particularly strict corporate environment, which would still work. But in this example, we're suggesting that, so in my uh, experience, what I've got here is we're deploying a new network in a remote location over here. We've ordered a, you know, a dedicated connection from one of the local ISPs. However, that can take months to be installed. So what we've got is we've got a 4G, we've got a Starlink, or we've got an, uh, some other connection here, temporary connection. And what this is going to give us is our, our link into this network, which is currently being configured. So it allows me to, from over here to connect to this one. And then I'm going to get access all the way over here. Okay, let's just clean this up a bit and we'll start again. Okay, cool. So mentioned cloud 
AWSCHR, which is our VPN L2TP server. And over here we have our remote client. Now what we're going to do is this is going to allow us to connect outbound to this. We're going to establish a VPN connection and we don't ma it doesn't matter what happens in the middle. We're going to create a secure tunnel across the internet into our server. We're going to have an IP address on this end of the tunnel and we will get an IP address on here. So we'll then add a static route. Obviously you could do something a bit more um, clever using dynamic protocols. A BGP or SPF or something, but for this example, just use a static route. So then, what we mean is that we'll be able to do is we're going to have a PC connected here and we're going to route all our traffic out of AWS. Okay, let's get going. Okay, let's jump on our Microtik. So, here we have two Microtiks. I have my CHR, as I mentioned, which is uh, in AWS with its public IP address here. And then I have another one, which is a, a HAP uh, AX, which is what this uh, machine that I'm on right now is plugged into, and it's what it's routing through. Um, I have a secondary interface on this on this PC, just so I've got uh, remote access to it. So if I change any of the routing, it's not going to kick me off. But that's uh, other than that, that's about it. Um, so if we jump back onto our uh, CHR. And then we're going to configure our um, L2, L2TP server. The first thing we do is going to add a profile. I'm just going to call this L2TP profile. Local address is going to be the address of the uh, bridge that I've added called VPN bridge. Um, but this could also be the LAN bridge if this, if you had a LAN and currently there's nothing else sitting on this. Um, the LAN side of this router, it's just for this demo. So that's why I've just added this uh, dedicated bridge. So I'll just give it that IP. And my IP is going to be this VPN pool, which I've already created, which if you've seen previous videos um, on VPN servers I've done, this is uh, the standard setup I've done. This CHR I've deployed in AWS, um, which again, I've done a video for how to do that. Uh, and it's using the the free tier, so it's effectively free for a, a whole year. Um, we've obviously some caveats in there, but uh, yeah, check that out if you want to have a look at that. Um, so yeah, there's my pool, which is 10 to 20. Um, so that's the uh, range that they would dish out for the clients connecting. However, because I'm connecting a router, I want to have a bit more um, uh, static um, control on the IP addressing. So I'll show you that later on, but this is just the overall pilot profile that's going to be used. And again, we could specify the DNS server to be one of our local online network if we wanted to, but for now we, uh, that should be it. Okay. There. Now we're going to go to interfaces. Now we're going to enable our L2TP server. Okay. So enable that protocol. We'll do, uh, version two and three. And now this is where we set our profile we just configured. Um, use IP set yes. And then we'll give it, I've just used this strong password I want. Obviously you would use something uh, more skilled than that. Um, if you are wondering as well why you can see the passwords, there's a little handy on the settings, just hide passwords. So if you ever type the password in there and you can't remember what it is, that's uh, pretty useful. But obviously disable that. Um, if you're doing a lot of configuration on a PC that could be viewed by the people. Okay, so apply that, so that's done. Now we just need to create our secrets, which is going to be our credentials for our uh, remote uh, router. So let's call it router-test-01. Again, give it a super strong password, which obviously you'd use something better than that. We're going to get L2TP. And then there's the profile again. Now, uh, this time we put that same local address in. Okay, and then this time we specify dedicated 
um, IP address for our, our remote client, just so we know, because we're going to add some routes to point to that interface to that IP address. Um, good thing about LTTP uh, using IPsec, if it was just a um, standard uh, IPsec tunnel, you don't um, have any, in, you don't have an actual interface. You do then have to create create a separate tunnel, like a GRE tunnel. Whereas this has a, it gives you an interface for you to point um, traffic to. Um, so that's that done. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and connect our client. Very simple. Again, we go to PPP, and we, this time we're going to add LTTP client. Okay, we're going to connect to. So we could use this IP address here. However, um, let's assume that this is dynamic and should this get rebooted, it's going to change. If this was your home uh, router and you don't have a static IP from your uh, ISP. So there's a built-in DDNS feature within MicroTik. Um, and there we give gives us this, this uh, randomly generated DNS name that won't change. And every time this IP address changes, it'll update that. Um, so we'll use that as our connect to. There we go. Okay. Let's give it, uh, router dash test dash one. Okay. Password. One two three. We need that as the default one. Uh, nope. Use RP sec. That was strong okay and that's it okay got to establish there we go we're up and running already so now if we look at our addresses we'll see that we've now got this dynamic one of what dot 100 which is what we set and it's on that interface there so we can now point traffic to that uh, uh, IP address and the same on our CHR for your addresses. You'll see in the address list is now this dot one is I'm sorry, dot one is here, which is the uh, the machine itself, and then one hundred is the network, which is actually the remote side, this uh, router test dot one, which is what it's using. So if we were using the um VPN pool, it would tell you what IP address there that it did given out. Um, so now we can to test that what we're gonna do is just Add another uh, bridge, and we will just call this LAN bridge, for example. Um, okay, and we'll give that an IP address of a nice, easy 192.168.100.1 uh, slash 24. We'll put that on our LAN bridge. Okay, so now we're just going to add. Um, some routes so the route of my the sorry the LAN of this machine is this 192.168.123.1 so we'll add that to the CHR side 192.168.123.1 whole subnet slash 24 and then we're going to point it to 1.1.10.1.254. 100 which is the remote end okay there we go and now so we know that from the the client side how to get to the remote subnet again we're going to add that route 192.168.100.24 and again point that to okay so bring up our Terminal. Ping one nine two one six eight one hundred dot one. There we are. We're pinging. Simple. Now I'll just quickly show you if we wanted to route because as as this machine is uh, connecting through it, I'll just show you that as well. We can ping from the machine itself as well. As you can see. But we're still routing all of our internet traffic out of the um, 
out of the local network um, so this is just something that if you ever do this you'll get caught out if you don't um, add an, a separate route so if I was to just to change my default gateway on this um, which is the, the router I'm connecting through instead of going to what is my development network as its gateway if I change that to be um, that IP problem is then that's not going to know how to establish the tunnel so as soon as I do that it needs to know how to get to the to establish the tunnel first and foremost before it can route, route any land traffic so what you'll find is one you'll lose internet access and two you will uh, your tunnel will drop so I'll just show you that while we're here um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a secondary dedicated route which is going to point to this IP again this wouldn't work um, if you were um, using a dynamic IP because obviously this would change but um, we're just assuming that it's going to be static in this this example this has nothing to do with what I've just shown you with the, the actual creation of the R2TP but I thought it's worth just mentioning this because this has caught me up a few years ago in the past so no sorry so we point that to our gateway which is our current gateway Okay, so our tunnel, tunnel will still manage to establish. Now this is getting it dynamically, so let's go to the HTTP client. You can see it here, and instead of just getting rid of that route, all I'm gonna do is just change that distance to two. So now I have effectively no way of, of getting it to the internet at the moment. Oh, tell line I do. Oh no, sorry, no, because I didn't get rid of it, so I haven't added one, sorry. Now when I add this one, with a, a lower distance, uh, you can see this one now goes blue, which means it's a secondary. This is now my primary. But if I didn't have this one here, in fact, I'll show you that, I'll get rid of that one. should find that my internet breaks okay so it's not pinging now that tunnel eventually will time out so let's just re-enable that so our tunnel can re-establish it i've lost access temporarily to my and they start pinging again soon as i re-enabled it there we go we're back but now if i do a trace route There we go, so it goes to the the hat the hat I'm on. And then it goes on to the uh, AWS IP address of the that VPN bridge that I created. I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, any questions please comment below. Um, if there is uh, anything you want expanding or if there's a particular video you want creating or issue something you're having troubles with uh feel free to comment um i'm happy to work for any issues you may have um you can follow all the links to my other videos uh, in the description that i think are, are useful there's links to my website where every time i do a video i have a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots from winbox as well as um cli commands so feel free to um to take a look at that comment on there uh, contact me via there um, but if not i'll please like subscribe and i'll see you on the next one cheers